Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Pierre Empelet, otherwise known as Pamboy. We are in the Palais de Tokyo and it's raining, but nothing stops fashion. I'm joined today by Charles Levet and Kevin Tekinel to speak about their work as creative director of Luomo Vogue and creative agency, maybe. Hi Hello, guys. Pierre. How Hi. are you? Good, good. Um, so how does one become a creative director? It's a bit of an obscure profession for many people outside of the fashion industry. So how did it all start for you guys? I was interested in many things. I, was, I loved fashion, but I studied film actually, so I went to film school. And then my first job while I was still in school was I was working on Devil Wears Prada. I was a production <laughs> assistant for a whole summer, which was amazing. And sort of that shifted my, mixed my interest in fashion and film. And from then on, I just sort of navigated towards fashion more and started working at an agency. And from then on, you know, slowly moved up and voila. And Charles is slightly more classical approach. To yeah, because I job, studied, I, uh, I studied at the Art Deco and I always had like an interest in fashion, but also photography, graphic design. And I didn't really know which specific field I wanted to study. And I think creative direction is one job actually that regroups a lot of different aspects. Uh, of the fashion world and the creative world. So. Yeah, completely. Um, what's the best thing about working as a duo? I think it's great to always have another point of view and be able like, to exchange about everything all the mm -hmm. time. And it makes, I think, everything a bit more fun and exciting, interesting yeah. and exciting. I yeah. think we were friends before we worked together. So that helped us sort of, we knew each other very well. And then we sort of were doing the same job, but separately. I was in New York, he was in Paris. And then when I decided to move to Paris, we, just, we were like, let's try this, let's give it a shot. And it worked out great. And it's important, I think, for both of us to, have, to be able to have that creative conversation and sort of find a middle ground. I think fashion, I mean, our business in general is very, it's so much of a collective uh, job that having that sort of conversation within your own sphere already helps you be, to be able to speak to others and decide with others and respect others' opinions. So I think it's helps a lot. I, would, I, don't, I don't know how we would do it if it wasn't yeah. the two of us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. of course, I think, you know, collaborative power is so essential to, to the industry, especially mm. in those difficult times. You know, we've lived through a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, how has this affected the way you work? Um, I think in the beginning, basically, we're starting our agency right before the pandemic. We hadn't even announced it. We were just doing little projects with certain brands. But and then the pandemic hit and we sort of took a break and we we sort of obviously everything seemed so out of place and we, you know, fashion sort of wasn't that, that important at that moment, moment, obviously. So we sort of took a step back and, you know, reflected on our jobs, on what it means to be working in fashion, but in general, what it means to be a human almost. And then right after the pandemic, we did our first shoot, I guess, was with in Paris with cheerleaders, again for Versace. And we found a local French cheerleading squad and they were amazing. So we did a project with them. So they weren't models, you know, it was a super diverse group of young boys and girls from all kinds of backgrounds. And we did fun videos and pictures. And it was a good way of coming back to the world of fashion because it was outside. It was, you know, there was a blue sky, energy and happiness. And yeah, it was I definitely a it was fun well, concept yeah. and everyone was really happy to be coming back together again and working and also to have like, like real people doing the shoot and being like so happy to be part of Involved it and doing in this, fashion. Really nice. I think, yeah. you know, all of them had this idea, the kids were talking to them and they had this idea of fashion being so, you know, cold or snobby right, or sort yeah. of like scary and they were happy to discover that it can be fun and yeah, you they can enjoy actually, yourself and celebrate being back to life. That's so. interesting, all, everything you're saying, because I, you know, we all work in magazines and I feel like people don't necessarily want fashion magazines anymore. They want magazines that speak about culture mm -hmm. and that have uh, a fashion element to it. What makes a good magazine? What makes a good magazine? magazine I think a magazine or a fashion magazine, I guess? A fashion magazine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's what we were saying, I guess. It's just yeah. to be able to give an aspect of the whole fantasy aspect of fashion, but also give like people need to look at the magazine and recognize themselves, see themselves, see a representation of themselves. Completely. And yeah. I think you have to see what's happening around you in all kinds of levels of life. So we did a whole issue on skate and skate culture. And it's not political per se, but I think skate's influence in fashion is 
something that we've all seen for the last 15 years. Yet right. no magazine no, had devoted a whole issue on skate. So it doesn't always have to be political, but I think it could be social, things that we see around us that we want to put on a platform and discuss and discover together. Subcultures. And then we did things. one cover that was part of the skate issue that was about Skatistan, which is just an NGO in Afghanistan that teaches kids through skateboarding. So it's a little girl holding a skateboard. Mm -hmm. you know, so it, I think it, it, it's not about fashion because she's wearing her own clothes, but it gives, it shows how culture and fashion can be intertwined and can change people's lives actually. And to be able to show that to everyone. And I to convey like, also like a positive message, like of something yeah. of inclusive course. and different and yeah. And unifying, yeah. Um, people are very unfamiliar, I think, with what creative direction is. So do you mind telling me about what's a day to day, you know, what's a normal day for you? Even our parents ask us, I guess, what do you do? Because I don't really understand. <laughs> it's There's unclear. a photographer. Yeah. Yeah. The photographer does this. What are, how are you like? So it's a bit like I always use this analogy. It's a bit like Mad mm. Men, the, the right. series. I don't know if you watch them. Yeah. But it's Mad Men from like the 50s and the 60s on a much smaller scale, which is not a huge building. It's just like a little office with a few people, minus all the sexism, minus all the racism, minus all the day drinking, the booze, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's kind of similar process where you have people brainstorming, coming up with ideas, pitching them to clients, um, you know, editors and whatnot, and then sort of trying to create things that we enjoy and we're proud yeah. of. And then a lot of it is like post-production, like, you know, working on the colors, working on layouts, and then sending them and getting feedback and because so, uh, yeah I it's think like it, advertising agency in a classical way but adapted on a smaller scale to fashion yeah because say. lots of people think that like it's just like the shooting days and it's mm -hmm. actually uh, when the magic happens but it's definitely just a small part of the work and the job mm -hmm. and it's very time consuming as well I'm yeah, sure you yeah, yeah, yeah. 1 a.m. every night. No, it, it is, but we do enjoy it since we're friends. It kind of feels like you're hanging out. Yeah. But actually, you're also obviously doing your job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I think you have to love what you do. As long as you do, you don't mind the hours. Of course. For young people looking at us, um, what would you say is required to become a great art director? Or creative director. We're so. sort of the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been very curious and been interesting in everything and like, trying to understand how things are working today and what is ex yeah what how to convey like great messages and i think i would say um i would definitely able, yeah. say like work under people learn the most you can learn from everyone and then you know when you feel like you've done enough take a chance on yourself and listen to your voice and find your own voice that's what i would say yeah. but also i think we for future generations because we see them, you know, through friends or whatnot, you know, like late teens or like people that are like in their super early 20s. I think we also have a lot to learn from them and the of course. older generations have a lot to learn from them because when you look at them, they have a perception on inclusivity, on gender, on all these things that are so much more fluid, and more open. Yeah, than because even they grew up directly like in kind of a more progressist uh, yeah. environment. Yeah. So I, I think, think we have yeah. to learn from them just as much as they, they have to learn from older generations. So we're sort of in the middle. But uh, I think, yeah, I think it goes both ways, I would say. Are you guys into music, I assume? Sure. Yeah. But like, yeah. not as <laughs> why. Uh, what's the first thing you listen to in the morning, Charles? The first thing I listen to in the morning? I listen to podcasts in the morning. Actually, I just ride my bike and just listen to the city. We love music, obviously, yeah. but we're more... I, I'm more like I have a really personal passion with film, so music so is secondary, I guess. Tell me about a film that has inspired oh you. Uh, there's so many filmmakers that have inspired me and our work. I really personally, like I love Hitchcock's work, for instance. I think but just the, the beauty yeah. of the images. I mean, there's so many. So yeah. Because lots like of the time I think we start to have an idea about like a, a project or a concept and we just in our head, like link it to the work of a, of a director that we could um, be inspired or want to reference in, in a project. Yeah, cinema is always like that, a very yeah. big inspiration for yeah. us. But so are a lot of things, obviously. What about you? Um, <laughs> any favorite movies? <laughs> Oh, I love so many movies. I love yeah, epic I know movies. Um, yeah, I love a big drama. Yeah. Something that makes me cry. Or oh, horror movie. 
the, um, the feel good <laughs> aspect of crying. Yeah. Yes, of yeah. course, yeah. always. I'm a cancer, so I'm a crybaby. Okay. Enough about me. Thank you guys mm -hmm. for <laughs> coming here. Thank you so for much for stopping by yeah. and for speaking with me um, under, under the rain. The rain. Yeah. But uh, I hope we'll see you again very soon. Yeah, yeah. thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you so you. much.